Okay, so this microphone should be working. We have negative monitor on this mic, but that is by design. We can also put the road in where the lip sync is even better. If the robe is this type of volume, then I should be sounding pretty bow. Bo 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 Oh, I think you guys can hear me, which is great because I didn't mean to be sending my voice out. You can hear me doing testing. How stupid do I sound? Thank you. 
Okay, let's try that again. Awesome. So, welcome everybody and welcome to the stream. You will be to hear me now. The question is, can you hear the guys on Discord? Somebody on Discord, say hello again. Ooh, maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. So, Twitch people, tell me, can you hear the people on Discord? If not, I'll just relay their questions. It doesn't really matter. Not a problem. Tonight, the first order of the day is to unleash a whole bunch of new uh, backeteers on the Maths for Games Kickstarter. The link's up at the top of the stream here. Uh, that'll be happening automatically at 10 p.m., so we can have a quick chat about that, make sure they're sane and make sense. If they don't, then I'm going to have to do an emergency fix-up. Um, and uh, then we will have a chat with everybody, answer questions. We can answer question, ask questions on Discord, uh, but I won't be replying there, uh, on Twitch. Um, and both of those chats are aggregated together over here somewhere, there. Um, and you can also ask questions in voice on the Discord Voice Lounge. Uh, whether or not you're going to be heard on the stream is a good question. I'm going to fiddle around and try and get that working uh, as we progress through the stream. Hopefully, you will, uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear that. So somebody on Discord, just shout up again. Let's see if we can get you out to the stream. <laughs> no, lots of hello. So I'm gonna have to relay the Discord questions, but that's not a problem. I'll just repeat them back. So keep them brief if they're on Discord, if they're in chat, obviously everybody can see them. A few different modes we can use tonight. We can use sketch mode, so if we wanna uh, talk about projectiles again or whatever else we're going to talk about then I can answer questions with projectiles uh, the other type of mode we can do is we can take a look at the Kickstarter see how that's doing uh, permanently you're going to see the current Kickstarter value in the bottom right of the screen and also we can hop onto Chrome and look at any website we wish this evening so they're the different modes we've got available to us so I have a first voice question coming in on Discord what's the question how can I help Okay, so uh, the question over on the Discord voice chat is how do you go about inverse kinematics? Uh, so my first question is going to be a clarifying question. Uh, from what angle? Are you talking about what's the mathematics behind it? In which case I'll only go into that superficially this evening. Are you talking about how to do it in Unity, how to do it in Unity or Blender, etc.? Okay, so you're talking about the mathematics behind inverse kinematics. So for everybody else, I'll just start off by saying what is inverse kinematics? Uh, do I do a diagram or do I use my arm? I think I use my arm for the moment. <laughs> so if you've got a robotic arm, your classic robotic arm that um, that you go and see uh, it anywhere really it, you, you have control of it axis by axis right so you might have a joystick say a digger say imagine a mechanical digger right in fact I use one of these in my garden so you have various controls one does this with a bucket uh, one would do this with the arm and then I don't have enough joints in my forearm without breaking it, which would be great for the viewing numbers, but not so good for my forearm. Um, but you understand that you can control each joint. That means that you have to work out, it's like imperative programming, you have to work out what series of movements you need. If you want to say scrape a hole out the ground, which is a very common movement with a, with a mechanical digger, you have to work out what series of inputs you have to put in to do that. So inverse kinematics, kinematics is the study of moving things. Inverse kinematics basically means let's do things backwards to that. Let's tell our system, and some mechanical diggers actually do this, right? That you can say, I want the bucket on the end to go from here on the ground to here on the ground. And you work out what series of joint movements uh, need to occur in order for that to happen. If, of course, it's possible. So that's the beginning. That's what inverse kinematics is. It's saying to something like Unity, Blender, or Unreal, uh, and I think Mike used it in the lamp section in Blender, for example, I want the end of this arrangement of armatures to do something. Typically, it's the end of it. I want the hand of this skeleton to move, say, in a circle in 3D space. What does the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist, and even the, the spine maybe need to do in order to achieve that moment? movement within the constraints of, of all the joints. So that's the, an overview of what inverse kinematics is. Before I answer the rest of the question, let me just see if anybody's got any um, questions on what inverse kinematics is. And thanks for the awesome question, by the way. I really appreciate it. So just going to see if any voice questions come up with that. Also, while fiddling and seeing if there's any chance I can get you guys coming through to the stream, because it'd be lovely to have your voice on the stream. Somebody on Discord, say something else for the purpose of testing, please. Or don't. Either way. Okay. Don't. That's fine. Maybe I can't hear you now. Maybe you are saying something and I can't hear you because I've stuffed it up. So let's try that. Yeah, you're going to need to use push to talk on, on Discord. Yeah. 
I don't know. Stream, can you hear people? Okay, I'll tell you what, somebody on Discord, say a keyword. Just one of well, just one of you. How are we gonna protect that race condition? Somebody say a keyword. Some somebody Okay, something different to a keyword. Is what? Say it again. Okay, somebody try and talk. Anybody hearing that? Audio and video slightly out of sync. Yeah, it will be slightly out of sync, Mikey, this evening because I can't delay the video for whatever reason. My audio is just rushing, rushing in. So, um, No, I don't think it's coming through the audio from Discord, which is a shame. I will just check the obvious for my audio sync and then I'll finish answering questions about inverse kinematics. So uh, shouldn't be a lot of audio out of sync issues. How, are you guys on Twitch? How are you finding video versus audio if I like clap my hands? I did test it before the stream. It was good uh, in the test, so... All right, not hearing Discord doesn't matter. We'll get that going one day. I've never managed to get that going, never managed to get that audio routing through. So I, I think I explained what inverse... Yeah, yeah, so you guys on Discord can hear me fine. Uh, what I'm saying is that Twitch people can't hear you guys on Discord. <laughs> so I'm here with like a, a random set of voices in my head, so I need to be careful. Well, I'm trying to do this mainly for the Twitch stream. So um, that's an overview of what inverse kinematics is. Anybody got any questions like on that? Video is 0.5 to one second behind audio. That's a long time. I will uh, sort that out. There you go. Try that. I should have adjusted the video and audio sync. Give it 20 seconds, should settle down. Um, um, so the best place to ask questions is gonna be on Twitch um, this evening and uh, not on Discord voice. Because if the Twitch stream can't hear you, it's a bit rubbish if I kind of go vacant like the Borg and go receiving commands. Um, so yeah, please ask questions on Twitch or in the voice lounge on Discord. Either's good enough, they will be, um, they'll all be aggregated together in this restream chat. We're not restreaming by the way, we're only streaming to Twitch because we're on the Twitch partner channel, we're not allowed to restream. By the way, I'd love to hear if the audio sync is a bit better. It seems that testing offline does not give the same results. Cool, so inverse kinematics at a top level is is that. It's saying what does something at the end of an armature need to, uh, if something at an end of an armature is gonna make a movement, what are all the bones up the armature need to do to achieve that movement? Mathematically, it's a little bit of a tricky problem. I don't know the full details of the maths at the moment, but it's a numerical solving problem. I don't think there's an absolutely straight solution to it. It's a multi-body problem. It's not as simple as just saying, well, obviously you do this, because there are many ways you can achieve a given result. I can rotate my arm like this, uh, in a circle, but I could probably do that same circle with some other awkward pose. So there are multiple solutions. You need to find one of the solutions that's good enough that uh, works within all of the constraints. And that would be some sort of minimization problem where you continue to try different things and have some way of working out, some people call it some gradient descent, we'll talk about that in the course, have some way of working out whether the parameters you've just chosen uh, are getting further, nearer or further away from the solution you're looking for, and then iterating until you get it very fast inside the computer. But good question, and uh, something I'm not, I can't go into too much detail about, to, more detail about tonight, because firstly, I don't have it fresh on the top of my head. Cool, so, um, another question. Audio is head of a video uh, still the audio is ahead of the video by one second. Wow, that's a lot. All right, well, let's uh, sort that out. Give me a second. Just put in a bit more audio delay. Okay, so we have even more audio delay now. So quaternions, maybe this is a good time to bring up a uh, browser. Let's bring up a web browser and do this. So one of the first things, obviously, with a new topic, I just need to make sure I am showing you the web browser. I hope I am. I probably aren't. Yes, I am. Uh, no, I'm not. You can, but it's the wrong. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you for letting me know. So one of the good things to do is not that. Is wiki what? I'm rushing too much? It's the Wikipedia things, and just to get a canvas as to what we're talking about. So quaternions, what they are, is extending complex numbers. So one of the things we'll cover in the maths course is the idea uh, of complex numbers. So just let's start with really complex numbers very briefly. Let's get on to a sketch. Uh, I will go clear it off and then just have a quick chat about what complex numbers are. Um, and then about how <laughs> you may or may not better visualize quaternions. So 
Complex numbers are super weird, but super useful. So you have a number plane, right? Everybody gets the idea that numbers can go from zero, uh, one, two, three, etc. Uh, and the other, also there's a concept that we could have negative numbers. A bit weird, do they really exist in nature? Not really, but if I had two sheep and um, I, uh, and you asked for three sheep, well, I'd only better give you two and kind of owe you one. So minus one means owe you whatever. They're real numbers, these things. They're just real numbers. We're used to those. Uh, there's another set of numbers which mathematicians came up with called imaginary numbers, and they sit perpendicular. They don't... <laughs> an imaginary number has no... A pure imaginary number, like something like this here called i, has no real part to it. And what is it? Well, it's actually the square root of minus one. What is the square root of minus one? Well, somebody just defined it to be i and built a whole load of mathematical constructs around that. Really weird number. Um, but really, really useful. And we'll be talking about this in the math course a lot. What quaternions do is they start to extend the concept of i and say, well, we could have actually other um, numbers. We could have uh, other mathematical, uh, sorry, other complex numbers that are orthogonal to these ones. Uh, I are different yet again, which is super weird. So you're adding weirdness to weirdness to get um, the basis of quaternions. So if we go back to Wikipedia, what it starts talking about is these matrices of things like the real component, this one thing here, and then i, j, and k, each of which are different types of imaginary numbers. Now, the math behind this, we won't even in the, in the foundation math course be going into this in complete detail because it will blow everybody's head up, uh, but we will go into it in enough of a detail that you'll have an idea how to use them. The main thing to take away about quaternions is that they are super useful uh, that firstly, that they're just one of many different ways of representing rotation. You can use Euler angles. Some people might say Euler angles if they want to mispronounce it. Um, you can use polar coordinates. You can use all sorts of different things. One of them is quaternions. And one of the cool things about quaternions is that they interpolate very nicely in a spherical space. So if you're trying to go from one rotation, say this arm rotation, to another rotation, if you try and go between this rotation and this rotation in Euler angles, what you tend to end up with is a really weird path. Like it might do something really strange, like go completely the wrong way. Uh, whereas what quaternions tend to do is they tend to interpolate from one uh, rotation to another in a pretty natural looking way. So that's one of the reasons we use them. There are other reasons you use them. The underlying representation of them is a matrice that is four wide, uh, which is really fast for the computer to compute and so on. So I don't know what the original question was. That was a little kind of uh, canned gob off about uh, quaternions, but... Uh, yeah, so Mike is saying IK isn't straightforward. Blender itself has two different solvers. Um, so as he was saying, there's their numerical solver system. Blender has two different algorithms. There's lots of different ways you could do that. How's the video sync doing now, by the way? I have tweaked it. We shall have to let me know. Uh, so uh, is it possible to use some of the award money you guys got from Epic to lower the stretch goal on the maths? A uh, good idea, but not really. We spent all of that award money on uh, a probation period for Gavin, uh, which in with which he has uh, remastered the first couple of sections in the Unreal course, uh, the C++ course, and built us a, uh, a blueprint, Unreal blueprint course. Unfortunately, he's leaving after the end of the probation period. Uh, so that's that Epic, that smaller Epic grant uh, gone. Question regarding Perlin noise. Could you elaborate a bit on uh, how to sample 3D Perlin noise and how to use it in Unity to make procedurally generated a terrain? A um, little bit advanced for this stream, uh, but Perlin noise is, uh, again, let's Wikipedia it. Perlin noise is a, a one form of randomization. It's based on smooth step. Let's just go wiki Perlin noise. In fact, if we look briefly also at the Mass for Games Kickstarter page, uh, firstly, just to seed you, your your brains guys uh, here is the new pledge matrix do take a look at that that explains about the, the new levels the mini degree the mini degree plus two and the mini degree live are the kind of s levels that are pretty cool you get everything with those and they're coming in 45 minutes automatically but further down the page you can see Perlin noise as an example here the the steps to Perlin noise you're going to need to understand things like lerping which is like I just talked about interpolation you're going to need to understand smooth step, a specific type of interpolation and building on that. You're going to need to understand gradients and vectors, etc. Eventually, it gets a Perlin noise. So, um, Perlin noise, a, a two dimensional representation of Perlin noise, may come out something like this. It's quite a good representation of clouds. Let me just check I'm sending the right thing to the stream. I am. Clouds can be approximated by something like per Perlin noise, although there are other noise methods that are better for clouds. 
Um, and you can imagine that if you took that funny uh, little cloud map that I'm showing at the top right of the screen there, if I click on it, and you were to use that as a height map of the terrain, you'd never be able to generate caves or anything because each of those colors would, uh, would just represent a height. So for example, black might represent zero height on your terrain and white might represent uh, 1,000 feet or 1,000 meters, let's say 3,300 feet high. And then any other color in between would represent the valleys and, uh, and, and hills. If you were to take that noise that you've generated, which you can generate by reading the Wikipedia page carefully, and they've probably given you a sample algorithm they have, and what language is it in? It's in C, which wouldn't be a big step to C++ or C Sharp. Um, you may be able to get a height map like that out. So one thing you could do is write an offline program, produce some Perlin noise like that, and import it into Unity as a height map. That would be how to do um, offline procedural generation, not at runtime. Uh, you can also use procedural generation in uh, Perlin noise at runtime, uh, and then you'd have to be manipulating the mesh at runtime. Brees actually made, Brees was the guy who started the uh, Unity course with in the first place. He actually made a very brief Unity course on uh, procedural generation, but unfortunately gave up on it and left. So love to get back to it before too long. All right. Um, only instructor that managed me to teach me some programming. I don't know if that's me, but if it is, that's great news. Um, What's happening with the C++ course? Maybe somebody's asking there. Somebody else is taking over. Yet we're doing that very soon. You don't know who it is yet, but you'll find out very soon. Um, remember, all the original content is still there. So how is the... Uh, Mikey's linked to a YouTube video, which presumably is an update. Oh, he's linked to a video about procedural planets from Sebastian Liege. That's awesome. Great guy, Sebastian, in South Africa. Um, yep, he's really cool. Superwig, welcome. Um, okay, so we have an, so how's this voice uh, sync? Somebody can estimate for me the how far out of sync we are, and I will delay or underlay the audio appropriately. At the moment, for reference, I'm at 1.2 seconds audio delay, so we'll see whether it's any good. So, a quick unrelated question I will answer. Totally unrelated. Do I need Unreal Source Code build for server build? I don't know at this stage, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to look it up. So, um, on our stretch goals, procedural generation is 100k. What's the mathematical concepts do you think that are important to procedural generation noise? So, I just kind of slightly covered that. You can see that in the map that is on the, uh, the, the basic kind of sample syllabus map that we have here. You can see that you're going to need to understand um, interpolation quite nicely. You're also going to have to have a pretty good understanding of vectors. And further than vectors, we're going to need to understand ideally something about uh, calculus. Ideally, partial derivatives, which is saying if I'm on a slope and imagine being on a hillside and it goes up and down in lots of different directions, right? So you've got, it goes, it's kind of got an east, west, up and down to it and it's got a north, south, up and down. And you're standing with your compass and maybe if you go north, you go downhill and if you go south, maybe you also go downhill. Maybe you're on like a horse saddle. And maybe if you go east, you go uphill and if you go west, you go whatever, flat, who knows? So asking the question, what slope is it in a given direction? What slope is it if I go north? What slope is it if I go west? That is a question of something called partial derivatives. So that's saying, um, if I was to do some calculus, some asking of questions about how this thing changes as I move, uh, and I was to ask that question in a particular direction, uh, it would be something called a partial derivative. Understanding those would be really useful. That's a little bit beyond what the foundation math course needs to cover. We could cover very basic calculus. We wouldn't need, uh, partial derivatives and the like in most other um, areas. So we'd specialize that into the procedural generation. So that's an example, one example for you. Another example would be smooth step, uh, the smooth step algorithm. We wouldn't need to cover that in anything else like physics or shaders probably. We may do in shaders depending on what we do there. Um, so that would be uh, one of the things that would be there. Cool. Uh, somebody thinks I need a one second delay. So maybe that's suggesting uh, that the audio is a little bit ahead. Still the audio is ahead. Wow, so if the audio is still ahead and I've currently got a 1.2 second delay, I'm not sure why I should go back to one second. So maybe have another vote on that. Yes, we'll be covering trigonometry in the course in some detail. Trigonometry is a super important topic. Yeah, we all need uh, procedural generation. It's really, um, to do it properly, it's a big goal. So we're gonna have to see a real kick up in the Kickstarter. Uh, we do have uh, Havoc stroke Unity stroke Microsoft showing some interest. They're all related, those companies. Um, in the in the project so that would be really cool uh, but there's no nothing official there whatsoever at the moment so uh how long until the new backing tiers go live they go live in uh, 40 minutes now let me give you a preview of those new backing tiers i'm wondering how i'm going to do that uh, i think i can do that by tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to work out how i'm going to do that and i'm going to take a voice question and relay it to you while i do that so 
Anybody in the voice lounge want to ask a voice question while I work out how to show you these new backing tiers? Awesome, what's that? Okay, cool. You just say Mm hmm Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I have to have, thank you very much. I have to interrupt. The, so, so I had a second question. Let me just relay the first one. The, the first question is about sharemygame.com. The good news is we're actually partnering with another company to provide share my, a better version of sharemygame.com, something that's much more feature complete, but not quite as complicated to use as itch.io. Um, and that's happening in about a month or two. If sharemygame.com, the question was, is sharemygame.com working now? Or the, or the comment was, maybe there's something wrong with it. Uh, there may well be something wrong with it right now, but I will push Sam to get it going. And I had another comment in the voice lounge. Hi. Yep. Oh, thank you very much. So Mark, uh, Irresistible Jelly, kindly just came on in my ear in Discord and said that uh, Share My Game has been fixed uh, this morning, which is awesome. So hopefully that answers that voice question. All right, so I, oh, I have another voice question. That's cool. Keep it really brief so I can relay it out to Twitch. That'd be great. And uh, for the next stream, I'll see if I can get you guys' voice straight out there. Go for it. So the question is, is there any recommended reading or early prep for the math course? No, not really, because I really want to take things from basics. I'm literally going to be starting with what's addition, subtraction, etc. I'm going to kind of be taking out a calculator. I think I talked about this on the last stream. I'm going to be taking out a calculator pretty much on a phone and saying, all right, guys, let's make sure we start off by understanding uh, ooh, which calculator do I want? Probably not that one. That took ages to load. That's got to be some really spammy calculator. Let's try this one. Um, so I'm going to be start off by saying, look, if you've got a standard calculator on a phone, oh, what do the basic buttons do? Add, subtract, divide, etc. You might think, well, I don't need that. But if we get a good foundation in uh, things like multiplication, division, etc., then it's going to serve us really well. Then I'll turn the, the phone sideways and say, well, oh, a load of new buttons show up on most phones when you do that. Uh, what does 1 over x mean? What does 2 to the x mean? What does square roots mean? What does n roots mean? What do log mean? What do other logs mean? What does sine and cosine mean? So all of that stuff we'll be doing from basics and then we'll be going from there. Just learning those foundations really well is going to serve you super, super well. You're going to be able to read stuff about maths better. You're going to be able to search for things about maths better. And you're going to have a lot more confidence and ability to do maths things better or better than you did before. I still don't know how to give you guys a preview of these uh, new backer tiers. Um, I think the easiest way is to not show you to, is for you to go to the Kickstarter and I thought I'll do it for you. And for us just to examine this pledge matrix together. So of course there'll be new boxes coming up here on the right, pledge boxes, but then they're, they're not going to say really anything else that this pledge matrix doesn't say. So let's just zoom that right in, keep it nice and still and make sure it's super clear. So what we're looking for is we're looking for these uh, mini degree at 17 pounds, mini degree plus two, and mini degree live. They're the new tiers. What they're gonna be giving you, um, well, you can see on there, pretty clear. Uh, we're filling in gaps that we left in the system before. We're discontinuing the uh, one plus one equals fun. Um, and I think hopefully that matrix is clear. If you've got any questions about it, ask in voice or ask in chat. And uh, I'll leave it on the screen for the moment. And those backer tiers should automatically arrive in 35 minutes time, which will be a bit of fun. So an older question from George. Welcome, George. Thanks for being here. Uh, by the way, anybody who's on Twitch, you're welcome to um, um, you're welcome to do any of the normal stuff. You're welcome to cheer us. You're welcome to subscribe, particularly with your Amazon Prime subscription. That would be super appreciated. Um, but that's up to you. So are there going to be... No, let's go one back. George says, what will there be old style physics covered? Um, they should be half difficult compared to realistic ones. Okay, our old style arcade physics. Um, probably, but I'd like to know what sort of things you'd like covered, right? So you're saying less realistic physics, but the kind of effects you'd get in an old 8-bit type of game. Yeah, I'd like to know what sort of things, and then we can talk about the specifics. So pop that in the chat, and I'll answer that in a sec. Um, what else have we got? Let's just go back to my big face. I reckon that's got to be a good thing, maybe. 
Are there going to be more advanced Blender courses? Well, Mike's on the chat. I think he could answer. I think that obviously as we move forward, we do want to do more advanced Blender content. Uh, probably not going to be immediate. It's not going to be... It's probably not going to be this year um, from Game Dev TV, but uh, it could be in the latter half, potentially. Uh, but remember, of course, we've got the, the environments course, the characters course, and the main Blender course right now. And I'll give you links to those. Um, I'll do that now. So there's the Blender environments course by Mikey. Here is the uh, character course by Mikey. And of course, you know um, about the main Blender course, which is there and currently being remastered. So what else do we have? Um... Do, 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 do. If I bought one by one plus one equals fun before and it's discontinued, will you still get it? Of course you'll get it, no problem. Um, it's just that we're not going to take on new backers. Anything you back, you're always going to get. And in fact, if you look at that pledge matrix, you'll find that some of you are going to be getting more than you thought you were going to be getting. We just can't change the text of the backer levels. Had another question coming through in voice. What was that? Oh, and you'll... So the question was, um, Blender is good for 3D modeling. It certainly is good for 3D modeling. Awesome choice for a free 3D modeling program. Does it work with uh, Unreal as well as Unity? Absolutely. Slightly different asset workflow uh, for that, but you can you can do models for Blender or Unreal. Uh, sorry, Unity or Unreal in equal measures for sure. Uh, Michael's explaining that the environment course goes into advanced, quite advanced materials, which is great. Now I've got a question from Jion. Uh, if I pledge for Mini Dewey Plus 2, when will the extra courses become available? In September or sooner? Can I really... Because uh, you really want to get the RPG course soon. Okay, common question. I have actually added it to the FAQs on the Kickstarter here. So if I scroll down... Well, this is a big font, but I guess for the stream that's appropriate. Um, do, 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 do. When will I get access to existing Game Dev TV courses? I'll read it out verbatim. When the Kickstarter... When Kickstarter settle the pledges? About two weeks after funding. So... Um, mid to late July. You'll be given free coupons by email to access the courses on Udemy. So there you go. As if somebody had already asked that question, there is the answer. I'll leave the pledge matrix up on the screen and go back to my noggin. There you go. Any other questions? There's bound to be more questions. There are always more questions. Have another, another voice question? Go for it. Keep it brief so I can relay it to the Twitch crowd. Yeah, so you, I think we've got a suggestion about the Discord server coming in. Is that right? Okay, yeah, go for it briefly. Just understand that all the time I'm not... Um, the, the people on the stream can't hear you, so I need to be keeping them interested. So be really... Re Give, go for a really quick suggestion or put it in uh, put it in the lounge and um, the moderators will pick it up and uh, we can probably do something about it shortly. So actually, let's leave that as it's not about maths, but um, do put it in the chat. That's probably the best bet in the voice chat, in the text chat rather. Thank you very much. So will all of the courses in the match series be available to your lifetime members? In the math series, I guess that is. Yes, lifetime members get access to all our Courses, any course that we release on U Udemy, uh, lifetime members will get access to. So, don't worry um, about somebody's apologizing, Jion's apologizing for asking a question that was on the FAQs. I did only add it to the FAQs a few hours ago. Where are the math topics that you'll be explaining? Be connected with practical examples in Unity or Unreal. Yes, um, not directly in Unity or Unreal. I'm going to be writing pseudocode, but the reality of that pseudocode is it's going to be basically uh, Unity C sharp with the semicolons taken off, pretty much. So it'd be super easy to get to Unity. And anybody who's capable of writing C++ in Unreal will be super able to just look up the relevant Unreal math library um, and change it. I mean, it's going to be almost the same. So yes, it'll be totally applicable, whilst, whilst remaining timeless, hopefully. Um, does the voice lounge work on an iPad? Don't know. Uh, if the stretch holes aren't reached, will there still be a potential of seeing them in the future? Yes, uh, we would approach things a different way and try again in the future, absolutely. I think we can get to the first stretch goal without too much problems and the rest is gonna entirely depend on how well you guys shout about the Kickstarter and share it and how well you jump on these new backer tiers that are released in half an hour. We'll have to watch that total pledge level jump up. I assume that total pledge level is live. Let's see if it's updating. I think it is. I think we're just, not much is happening. Basically what's happened at the moment is most people uh, from the community have been kind enough to back us and now what we need to do is create a bit of excitement outside the community so sharing the kickstarter is the best way to do that um now the video 
is ahead of the audio almost one second. Ah, okay, so let's fix that. The video is ahead of the audio almost one second. Yeah, so the third of a second, that's what I always had in my testing. I'll go back to that and uh, suspect it will sort itself out. Let me know guys about that in a few minutes once you hear the difference, the shift. What is a mini degree? A mini degree is just a fancy way of saying you're going to learn a whole load of stuff that would be similar to what you'd learn in a degree, but you're going to do it uh, at home and it's not going to cover as much as a degree because uh, there's not going to be as many hours of tuition as you'd have in something like a degree. So started your guys. Ah, you've got to be American saying your guys. That's awesome. I love that Americanism. Uh, yeah, Udemy Blender tutorial last week. Great stuff for the new Blender release. Awesome. Thanks for being with us. I'm sure that you'll have fun and enjoy it. Um, that microphone I'm not using that one so it doesn't matter if I scratch my chest okay Mr. Waffles I love your uh, username there that's cool does the math make you better a lot better as you say it will in the course um and some awesome at sign I'm not sure what that is about look understanding maths is uh, learning to program helps you learn to think and learning mathematics also helps you learn to think so it is pretty foundational it also happens that the whole universe all the rules of the universe seem to be written in maths so i think it is pretty foundational i think it is pretty important i really want to heal people's relationship with maths it's uh, a lot of people aren't having a lot of fun with maths which is a shame because it is fun so brunix says so it'd be interesting if the game devs the ones i wasn't going to read it out verbatim this question here Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying some sort of lottery. The idea here is some sort of lottery for getting like one-to-one -one help. That's um, that's an interesting idea. Uh, it's something else to administer, but it's, it's possible. Um, if you want kind of more one-to-one -one help, then check out the backer levels that are, let me just bring them up. That have live, anything that has live in it, is going to give you the ability to join us in this type of environment, but a more closed environment on Zoom where you can all speak and share your screens. Anything um, live will give you that. So £47 or above will give you some one-to-one -one contact or one-to-group contact during the uh, production, which would be fun. Uh, so somebody else likes our Udemy courses. That's good. Um, what's the average polycon for models that work well with most devices? Well, there's a big difference between an Android phone and a top-end PC, of course. Uh, the Android phone might want uh, models that only have a thousand polys. The top-end PC might be perfectly happy with 10 million. So quite a lot of orders of magnitude to use a math term difference there. Hey, pop quiz. How many orders of magnitude difference are there um, between... Firstly, I'll ask the question for those who are advanced, and then I'll explain what orders of magnitude are. How many orders of magnitude are there between 10 million and 1,000? Somebody in the chat. So we want a number here that's between 1 and 20. How many orders of magnitude difference between 10 million and 1,000? So the first people to answer already already know what orders of magnitude are. Orders of magnitude are, uh, depending on the number base you're in, but we tend to use base 10 because we've got 10 of these things. Um, orders of magnitude are how many jumps in base 10 do we have? So from 10 to 100 is one order of magnitude. From 10 to 1,000 is two orders of magnitude because there's two more zeros. Uh, so now the question was quite easy. How many orders of magnitude between 1,000 and 10 million? Um, the way I'd think about that, by the way, especially if I give you really big numbers, is I'd use something called standard form, which will absolutely be covered in the math course, which is when you get to really big numbers like 10 million, it starts to get hard to think of. Much easier to go, well, a million, million has six noughts and 10 has one. So 10 million is something called one times 10 to the seven or just 10 to the seven. 10 to the power of a seven, 10 times 10 times 10, seven times. So 10 to the 7 is 10 million, 1,000 is 10 to the 3, 10, 1 with 3 noughts. So the difference between 7 and 3 is 4, so the answer is 4 orders of magnitude. Or I stuffed that up because I'm doing it live. Either way, that's an answer. Uh, you cover curves and patches, probably will. Uh, do you have to be good at maths to learn Java? Depends what you're trying to do in Java, but some maths knowledge will help you. Um, sounds like a few people are chomping at the bit in the Discord voice lounge. Anybody want to ask a question over there? Go for it. Keep it brief so I can relay it to the stream, and that will be awesome. Where you watch the stream, by the way, guys, is that on Twitch. I'll give you the link now.
Yeah, so the first question is how much of the course is complete and how much needs to be done? None of it's complete because they only just started production on it um, as soon as it funded, which was a few days ago. So once it's funded, it's like, cool, let's get into production. Um, how many videos are made? Uh, three videos currently made. So kind of answers to your question. That's not none of it, but it's almost none of it. Uh, how long is it going to take? Well, the first content will come out to the, pub to the main public, the non-early access people in September. Let's just give myself plenty of time. It might be before that, but I don't want to over-promise and cr stress myself. So. And the second half of your question was? Yeah, so do I draw um, inspiration from live chats to put content in the course? Absolutely. I think I like to think that we listen to everything you guys are saying and consider it. We don't necessarily always do it, but we consider it. Uh, one of the questions is, is there a roadmap? Um, what I have added in here, which is uh, pretty dense, but it's not dense as in stupid, or it may be, uh, but dense as in like lots of it in a little place. It's just under the squiggly spider diagram, which, by the way, is a totally incomplete syllabus. It's just an example. The complete syllabus would look crazy. It is a dense paragraph of other topics, um, and this is not this is not exhaustive, but it's a bunch of other things people have asked about. So if you want to have a look at that, see topics covered will include, and uh, that will answer some more of your questions. Where should we go? Let's go. I'm going to stick the main Kickstarter page on the screen and look for some more questions. How am I doing on the stream, by the way? It's pretty. Um, I could probably do with a moderator. Uh, it's pretty tricky to manage all this, uh, but seem to be doing it so let me know how you think it's going what and while we're midstream what's one thing I could be doing better that I can change now midstream like a volume level or like a sound delay or like lighting or like uh, speak slower or like smile more or whatever what's something I can change during this stream one thing that I could do to make the stream better so three three four four orders of magnitude four I think is the correct answer so what's the best way to learn from the Unity documentation? And you know what? That's a good question. And I think that learning from the Unity documentation isn't necessarily a great way of going about it. Uh, I think you might be better uh, picking a project, and we're pretty good at suggesting projects for you in the courses, and then diving into the Unity documentation as you need to. If you want to learn from documentation and kind of go through it, then um, pick an API in the document. Maybe you get to mathf.clamp for example, and go, what could I use this for? Why might I want to clamp a value? You might want to clamp a health value between 0 and 100, uh, but allow the code to try and push it over 100 or under 0, but not actually let the variable that you're writing into ever go below 0 or above 100, for example. So try and find yourself an application for it. Awesome. So we've got lots of correct answers to the number of orders of magnitude. We've got four there, which is cool. Um, so something feels really bad, man. I'm not sure what feels really bad, man. Uh, maybe you could clarify, uh, elephant one. Uh, I can't math, awesome, that's not math. Uh, magnificent math with Mike, um, great. How big a game can you make as an open world sandbox type thing by yourself if you get me? Uh, big, so it depends what you mean by how big. <laughs> if you mean how big a game as in how big could the world be? Uh, well, Notch made Minecraft. Uh, the PC version of Minecraft, uh, the, the surface area of the planet, I think, is about 50 times bigger than Earth when you're given that a block in Minecraft is one meter. So a big planet, if that's the question you're asking. If the question you're asking is how successful a game can you make as a single guy, um, I would also refer you to Minecraft and say pretty successful. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But you're going to need procedural generation, so you need to get us to that stretch goal. So you guys are going to have to be upping your pledges. Uh, lots and lots and sharing with your friends. Will there be any math relating to optimization? If so, which engine? So uh, we would cover optimization within um, within procedural generation would be the most likely, also potentially within shaders, and therefore uh, we would the pre first preference would be Unity because it's accessible to everybody, and then we may create other courses later for other engines. But look, we're getting well ahead of ourselves at the moment. We need to get to the first stretch goal, which is the physics stretch goal. Uh, which will teach you advanced physics. By the way, the sort of stuff advanced physics would cover is the basic physics in the basic foundation course would be there to help you with mathematical concepts like trigonometry and uh, constant acceleration formulas and this type of stuff. Um, not the constant acceleration in maths, it's basic physics. But we, if we do projectiles in the foundation course, they wouldn't include air resistance. More advanced physics would and so on. We'd probably cover things like springs and, and, and swinging and ropes in the, in the more advanced physics course. The first stretch goal. Not sure if it's the time to ask, but are there any plans to do an intermediate Unreal Engine course similar to the RPG? Uh, we have two intermediate Unreal Engine courses, of course. One is the Unreal VR. I'll just see if I can give you that. Um, I think it's this code here. And then the other one is this. Is it that? Yeah, Unreal Multiplayer. Um, 
RPG maybe, but not at the moment. I think that's one that people do keep asking for, so you know what it's like. If you guys keep asking, eventually that type of stuff happens. How's the audio sync, by the way? I've set it back to the original delay of 0.2 seconds. Should It's what I tested it as. We'll see. So, um... Where are we? Sound and video's a little off. That wasn't long ago, so it looks like it's still a little bit off. Uh, well, maybe it drifts around. Maybe that's just how streams work. I don't know. Um, maybe it's drifting around on my computer. It's possible. It's not what my tests have shown. Um, I'll try and fix it better for the next one. Um, will the maths course be project-based? It'll be micro-project-based. It'll be like you've got a specific question, the type of question like what angle do I launch this projectile at or how many bits do I need to represent an army of this size or how do I, you know, so on. Millions of maths questions. Um, they'll be micro-project-based. Um... I'm not sure what this conversation about being a group of three and we can make... Oh, okay, you'll be a group of three. We want to make a really huge open world game. Um, we left the web ve development to one of us. Uh, blah, blah, blah. How long will it take and it'll be successful anyway? You're dedicated, yada, yada. Okay, I, I still don't know whether you mean you want a huge game as in uh, lots... What do you mean by huge? Hugely successful in monetary terms. Huge in terms of the world area, which is mainly restricted by your algorithms and the uh, the memory and the limitations of the floating point limitations in your system, like 32, 64 bit, etc. Um, how much detail do you put in exactly? If you put a lot of artistic assets in, it's going to take a lot of time. If you look at No Man's Sky, uh, for example, uh, I'll just bring it up on the screen. Actually, No Man's Sky, just so we know what what we're talking about. So I'm sure you all know what No Man's Sky is, but just to put a visual to it. And also works as a thumbnail when you're when you're whipping through the stream later. This game, okay, um, and it's actually in the Kickstarter video. If you look at No Man's Sky, once they've designed the system that creates the basic world and terrain and trees and things, you get a huge amount of terrain for free. But then you look at the these ships and these characters and lots of other things. There's a long tail of things that are going to take a lot of uh, asset creation time, and they're the things that'll slow you down. And if you don't have them, the world can feel a bit. Uh, what did what did uh, No Man's Sky feel like to me when it first came out? Just a bit kind of lonely, I guess, and soulless um, until they started adding a lot more of that stuff in. So a bit inhuman. So I'm trying to not miss the questions. I'm bound to miss a question. If I do, just ask it again. So um, one of us is already blah, 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 doing blah, blah, blah. Okay. Is Unity going to be using the maths course to illustrate some of the maths, like in the physics course? Uh, yes, in any of the stretch goal courses, um, not in the foundation course. The foundation course wants to be timeless and fundamental and without any of the distractions. I do a lot of work on paper these days. Well, not quite paper, uh, an expensive paper substitute called a remarkable uh, product placement in the video. I don't work for them, endorse them. Well, I do endorse them, but I don't get paid to endorse them. And I also um, don't get any commission and whatever. Anyway, I love them. Uh, but paper's cool, and you don't uh, you don't get so distracted on paper, and I want to keep it more like that for the base maths course. Uh, are we going to address mat matrices? Yes, and that should be in there, I hope. It's not in the planning image, but it should be in the paragraph below the planning image. Let's just bring that up. Chrome, there you go. Matrices is there. Yes, absolutely. So, somebody's learning C++ on Code Academy. Um, now help you with object-oriented programming oh now to help you with object-oriented programming cool by the way guys unfortunately object-oriented programming is not going to necessarily be the future of game development programming um, it's been the past because it's been a really cool way of letting our human brains map into code but for performance reasons we're going to probably if unity's uh, entity component system or the whole um, they've got a whole new way of doing things entity component job system etc um, it's called DOTS, D-O-T-S, Data Oriented um, Something System. I'm not sure what the T stands for in DOTS. Somebody, what does T stand for in DOTS with Unity? I've forgotten. Um, but that is going to change things. We're going to need to write code in a way that's not so object oriented. It's more data orientated. So, you know, in object orientation, we're all about, oh, hide your data, show your methods. We're going to start to have to shift our focus one day to hide your methods, show your data. It's going to be weird. It's going to be fun. And we don't worry, we'll be here to teach you uh, the differences when it comes about. So, more questions. Do you think the course is redundant? Oops, boom, lots of other questions came in. <clears throat> That's gonna be tricky. Oh my God, so many questions. I have to drop down. Excuse me a second while I catch up with that. Anybody got a question in the voice lounge in the meanwhile? Yeah, cool, what's up?
Thanks for asking. So uh, this is a student of the both of our Unity courses, basically, asking how difficult it is to switch to Unreal in the future. Um, if you switch to Unreal Blueprints in the Unreal Blueprints course, pretty easy. You're learning lots of differences in the way the engine works. If you're switching to C++, bit of a step up in your programming to go to C++, but if you've done a decent amount, several sections of one of the two Unity courses, you'll be, uh, you'll be right as rain, you'll be golden. So that'll be cool. So is the course redundant for someone who's starting a computer science degree soon? The math course, um, if you're it depends where you're doing that computer science degree and how mathematically based it is. I would say, so let me think of the, the kind of the top of the tree there. So Sam, if I think of a specific person, Sam did a computer science degree at Cambridge University down the road. Very theoretical, very, very well taught. Uh, would Sam get anything out of the math course? Yes. Uh, would a lot of it be something he already knows? Yes. So um, it would be a revision and it would be, to answer one of the other questions, really showing you had it apply that to the maths. Now, if it's not well taught and it's not fundamentally taught at your university or wherever you're taking the degree, then you'll get a lot from the course because we'll be looking at things in a very different way. So who knows here what a tangent is? We talk about sine, cosine, and tan. You know, we're gonna do things like really slow down and say, what is a tangent? Um, where did that word come from? Why is it called that? And so on. I can show you on a sketch if you want. I think I did it in the last live stream, so I probably won't. Uh, yeah, ECS is the next Skynet. Will you be doing more demos of the type of maths you'll learn? So yeah, what I'd like to do on future streams, what, what I'm hoping is that I'm going to be able to move into a teach and chat or some other name um, system where I do quite a lot of my production on Twitch and I stream it live and it's uh, to a heartbeat every half an hour I do a lecture and I try and do three lectures a day and they're pre-published what we're going to be doing and of course it still goes out on Udemy and everything with all the quizzes you still need to take the course on Udemy if you want to get the most from it but there would be an element of it going live on Twitch if you miss it you miss it if uh, you want quizzes you don't have them um, and so on but it would keep me to account and you guys to account and uh, and it would be a really pretty cool way of making sure you say to yourself look i want to take three videos a day and i'm willing to commit the time if the time zones work out this type of time is a day uh, then we could do that which would be quite cool so i'm going to try that and see how it goes and i would literally go from talking to standing up doing a presentation showing up a slideshow actually teaching the thing and then answering some questions and then teaching again so we can see how that goes i'll probably only answer questions from twitch prime subscribers though at that point at the highest level so so, trying to keep this brief, but I don't know the proper terminology for, for it, so here it goes. By the way, before I answer the rest of that question, one of the points about learning something like maths is that if you're in a new topic like maths or programming, one of the difficulties is even searching for the right thing, right? It's, what do I go to Google and type? This is why learning the foundations of these things is so important, because if you don't even know what to search for, it's really hard to get the good quality results you need. Anyway, just demonstrating that point. Well, this course also potentially teaches how to detect where to put a line or a material. To explain further, in our project, we'd like to have a vis uh, visible representation of the kingdom borders on a map. These borders should be able to move and collide with one another. Um, yeah, so one of the examples I give for that is something like, um, I know what you mean with kingdom borders. I usually use the example of something like the XCOM borders. So if I go XCOM 2, which I was playing earlier today, punishing game, just keep getting absolutely slapped. Um, but your kingdom borders are something like, not this, I don't want a YouTube video, what I want is something like this. These type of borders here which say, you know, this player's here and he can move, I think yellow means in two moves, to uh, anywhere in this yellow boundary. And kingdom borders would be somewhat similar. Uh, calculating that based on uh, radiuses, which is one way of doing it, or based on Manhattan distances, which is the idea that in Manhattan, uh, pretty much because it's a block system, a grid system, if you want to go from A to B, it kind of doesn't matter whether you go west first and then north, or whether you go north and then west, or whether you kind of zigzag through the middle. Slightly counterintuitively, zigzagging through the middle is pretty much the same distance as just going all the way up one side and across. That's called a Manhattan distance. Well, we'll be covering things like different distance metri metrics and the like. Yeah, a fundamental point in mass. What does it mean to ask how far is one thing from another you have to understand what the distance metric is on a sphere how far is one thing from the other well if you go through the middle it's one distance if you go around the outside it's called a great circle that's another distance and so on so yeah um i think we'll be covering some of that yes what games am i currently drawn to what am i currently playing if anything i'll tell you what i'm playing i'm playing go close that freaking window because it's freezing over there and while i play that game i think i'm going to roll you the kickstarter ad for two minutes uh, I will close the window, go for a loop break, and then come back and tell you what games I'm currently playing. So enjoy the Kickstarter ad. I'm going to kill the background music, like so, and uh, kill myself, like so, and I shall be back in a moment. 
Learning mathematics can be difficult and unfriendly, and I'm here to make it easy and welcoming. My name's Ben, founder of Game Dev TV and a bit of a closet mathematician, and I want to help you level up your game development skills by learning maths properly. We want your support creating an online mathematical masterclass. Whether you're a complete beginner or already got some mathematical competence, we're going to take you from the very basics and build it up step by step from there. We are no strangers to teaching tricky topics to beginners. We've taught over half a million people to code from scratch, and we're going to apply the same teaching methodologies to mathematics. We all want to be able to do the sexy things like procedural terrain and world generation, like advanced physics, maybe Spider-Man swinging through the streets. Perhaps you want to learn how to do shader programming or visual node programming in Blender. They are fantastic aspirations to have. The important thing with a topic like maths is we take things step by step. We're going to take you on a very clear journey from the beginning to those sexy things I mentioned a moment ago. You're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of aha moments along the way. So how are we going to go about this? Well, we're going to go through a series of what I'm going to call success cycles. You're going to start off with a real world video game problem, like what angle do I have to shoot at for my projectile to land where I want it to go? Then we're going to delve into the mathematics behind the situation before finally translating that mathematics into a pseudocode that looks very much like the language you're going to end up using, like C Sharp, C++, Python, etc. Mastering maths will make you feel really smart. It will help you level up as a game developer and you're going to have a huge amount of fun along the way. So back this project and help us change the way that maths is taught for all ages. Back this project now. <laughs> awesome, so I am back. Oh, I'm sort of back, but my camera's not back. That's interesting. Huh, it's particularly interesting. What's going on there? Oh, well. Seems my camera has packed us sad while we've been sitting here. We're going to have to live without me for a minute on the camera. I shall answer some other questions whilst recycling this camera. Not literally sticking it in the bin, but turning it off and on again. That old adage, have you tried turning it off and on again? Very strange. Why would the camera give up? Oh, nobody snuck in and bashed it while I was away. Anyway, what games am I playing at the moment? I am playing uh, XCOM 2 and uh, Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect is super cool. I am absolutely loving Tetris Effect. So, oh, I think I know what's going on. Do I know what's going on? I don't think I do know what's going on. Yes, I do. There we go. I need to just refocus myself and then we'll be there. You know what happened? The remainder of the video was still sitting over the top. So give me just a sec. I need to mess around with something to get my uh, focus on. Then I'll uh, then I'll answer some more questions. So somebody, uh, Twitch Dog, to, or who's told me? Yeah, Twitch Dog said that DOT stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack. Awesome. Thanks for that massive thumbs up for telling me what that meant. Um, I had forgotten temporarily. Uh, games I'm playing are Tetris Effect. In fact, I'm in the last level, <laughs> um, the one where you have to fill 90 lines on expert mode. It's stupid fast, and I might well stream uh, myself doing that on Twitch straight from the PS4 in the next few days, maybe on Friday afternoon, something like that. Um, Tetris isn't usually that exciting, but trust me, the end of Tetris Effect's nuts. So, uh, M1K3 says, can you ask a question in the voice lounge? Sure you can. Go for it. What's the question? So you have the Blueprint and C++ course on Udemy. Yep, so I'm just relaying it for Twitch. Yep. Okay, so the question is, what's the typical split for, between C++, sorry to interrupt you, just for the Twitch guys, so what's the typical split between Blueprint and C++ in game development in industry? So some people make games purely in Blueprint. You absolutely can make full commercial games. Look at, um, that. my classic example is my friend Dan DeRosha, who made Cube, Q-U-B-E, 
um, purely in blueprints, in fact, in something that was much worse than blueprints called Kismet years back. Um, awesome game. And Cube 2, I think, did use some C++, but frankly didn't have to. So you can do everything in blueprints is this first answer. Then people tend to move things into C++ for a few reasons. Um, some APIs, some functionality is not available in Blueprint. So that's one reason to go from Blueprint to C++. Another reason is sometimes you can't get as much performance out of Blueprint, although these days Blueprint is pretty good with performance, but sometimes you can't get as much performance. And that only really matters if you're pushing the bounds. Uh, sometimes you want to, uh, you, for, for sharing purposes, it's easier to collaborate on and see the differences and merge and, and, and teamwork on code, uh, as in text code, than it is on visual code, although there are tools for that as well. I'm a pretty big believer in visual code. Um, so there are a bunch of the reasons. The biggest showstopper for, for like a, a big company would be that if the APIs aren't available, they need some multiplayer code that's not available in, in Blueprint, for example. Um, also, Sam and I, for example, in Battle Tank in the Unreal course, we uh, broke into the AI system and, um, and prevented it doing all of its work, prevented it controlling an enemy tank how it wanted to, which made it look ridiculous. It moved around in this kinematic way, um, which was not at all natural, and said, no, Mr. AI, you're going to have to use the same controls as the player. Uh, and we did that using C++ by suppressing a call to something called Super, which is where we said, don't do the stuff that the engine would normally do here, just do what we say. And I don't think there's a way to do that in Blueprint. So there is a whole bunch of, a long tail of reasons why you might use Blueprint, but you don't have to use Blueprint at all. Does that begin to answer your question? You're welcome. I'm sorry that I have to rush people on the Discord voice uh, with their questions, but um, there you go. There you go. Bring the background music back in. How's that? So I'm going to rush through these text questions. Hey, those, those, uh, those new backeteers go live. So I want... We've got to get this thing to thirteen to 15,000 during this stream tonight. So I'm just going to stay up all night, keeping my family awake. Uh, uh, so when those new rewards come out in about five minutes, you guys have got to jump on them, please. It'd be awesome. So uh, is this the same thing as a live prejudice or separate live training, Sergeant? Um, so, Anthony, what I'm suggesting is that we... Um, that I do some of my production live like this. I mean, I wouldn't spend quite as much time just gobbing off and answering questions. It would be um, more time actually recording content that would be pre-prepared. We'll see how it goes. How many math courses? I, it would be in addition to the voice calls that we will have as part of the live, um, the live tier. Um, unless there's such an overlap that there's no point in them in di being different. And then all we'll do is do it all live, but we'll only, I'll only talk to those people who've paid for the live tier. One way or the other, by the way, well, if I start doing production, actual full-on production uh, live, I'm not going to be able to take, take questions from anybody because it's just going to throw me off. You'll never get any course content from me. So it'll either be the 24.99 Twitch subscribers or people who have subscribed to a, one of the live, uh, so the 47 or 49 pound or above in the Kickstarter. So uh, we have to restrict those numbers. Otherwise, it, it just I'll never get anything done. Um, don't mind just talking to anybody like tonight on one of these promotional AMA things, but uh, can't do it. So 47 pounds and above, can't do it like sustainably. So how many maths courses planned? So one foundation course at the moment, if we hit 30,000, it becomes a foundation course and a maths physics course. Um, if we hit 60,000, it becomes procedural generation and so on. Uh, neural networks, love to get into that. It's probably going to be next year, realistically. Um, question, Azrael, will I be covering mathematical progressions? I'm not sure what you mean by mathematical progressions. So um, can you just clarify what you mean by that so that I don't need to look it up? And then um, I will answer. You know, when they say in programming, if you've got a big complex problem, break it into smaller, simple problems. Yeah, exactly. And math is all about that. Uh, okay, somebody's currently in high school and planning to go to college is wondering if the maths course will help me. Um, yeah, so will the maths help you outside of game development? Yes, I, I really thought about billing this Kickstarter as this is the fun way to learn maths. You know, really it is. It's, it is really much bigger than just maths for games. It's, this is a whole new way of learning maths. Just like our uh, coding courses are learn to code the fun way by making games, this is learn maths the fun way by making games or using maths for games. The thing is, lots of people are looking to learn to code. So therefore, kind of intercepting, giving, you know, sell them what they want, give them what they need, intercepting the demand for learn to code and then redirecting into learn to code by making games works. Not so many people are looking for learn maths, which is a shame. It's just, I don't know why, but they're just not. So I'm not billing it off the top as that. I'm more saying to people who, who are um, interested in game development, maths is foundational and really important to that. But 
yes, it is a great fun way to learn maths in general, which you could apply to anything. So, um, when the camera's not back, at least the video's not out of sync anymore. Haha, <laughs> funny. Um, that's cool. So, am I still out of sync? It's. Can somebody do me a favor and estimate again? In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to record this anyway for a second. So, just taking a recording so that I can watch it afterwards. I'm going to clap my hands. And then, what I'll do with that recording is I will pop it into a video editing program and I'll just look at the sound wave and look where my hands landed together. I'll better see how many frames out of sync I was. And that might answer the question. It may not because the, the delay might be different on the stream to the disc recording. I've optimized it for the disc recording. It might be different on the stream. In which case, I'll just watch the stream and do the same thing later. Cool. So. So you, I'm having a, a, a voice come in on the Discord voice lounge saying that I'm out of sync by up to three seconds. So I suggest, I'm assuming you're saying that my uh, audio is three seconds ahead of the uh, video. Is that right? Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, we'll try that. I'll try two and a half. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Let me know. Cool. Shablo is asking about the C sharp conversion for Godot. I know that's due now. So uh, we, it's obviously been delayed a long time. Uh, the reason I haven't converted the Godot projects into C sharp up until Godot 3.1 is because the API kept changing. Now that Godot 3.1 is out, I don't really have an excuse anymore. Um, so I need to get on with it. So if I don't do it in the next few days, I've said to myself, if I don't do it this month, I'll simply hire somebody to do those conversions. And then we'll look at building the course content from there. So it'll just cost me money if I don't do it. So either way, it's going to get done. Um, and uh, I'm going to do something about it in the next week or so. So I'm not saying it'll be done then. I'm saying the first thing I need to do is convert the code. Where are we? Uh, okay, I think we're about, oh no, we have just had the new tiers released. Let me check that the new tiers have auto released. See if it even works like that. So let's refresh the page. Go and have a look. If all this timing stuff has worked. Hmm. Okay, so I'm now hearing that the, the audio is as much as six seconds out. That's uh, ridiculous. I can't believe that the audio is six seconds different to the video. Um, no, that's crazy. No, no, it's... No, 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 I appreciate anybody trying. So the, the person who's trying to help me with the sound sync is apologizing. I've just changed it to six. I can't believe six is going to be the, the thing. So um, my panel isn't updating, apparently. That's a shame. It'd be, it'd be a shame for that not to update. Let's try changing the um, URL, see if we can get that to update. Are you saying that the Kickstarter is doing better? 12597, I think it is. Oh, I see. 597, 591. I think it will update. It'll just take a few moments to update uh, because it's rendering. It's a different browser working inside Wirecast. So I think that may be the case. All right, cool. So where are we? Uh, have, the new, have the new tiers come out? They have come out. Uh, why has 1 plus 1 equals fun not killed itself? Don't know. I'll do that after the stream. I'm going to wind this stream up fairly shortly, by the way. Um, so just see where we are with the questions. Uh, somebody saying three seconds is way too much. On my video, you're more, no more than half a second. You know a second on this stream delay. I'm going to leave it at that and uh, I'll worry about it later. Okay. Ah, uh, you know what's going on, guys. The concerns I'm getting about the, uh, the, voice, the voice sync. If you're listening on the Discord voice lounge, you will hear my voice miles before the stream. If you're on the Discord voice lounge, I would actually suggest, unless you want to speak, that you don't listen there, that you listen on Twitch. Uh, and the people on Twitch probably have got it pretty right. That's what's been going on all this time. And then we've got different people with different stream delays on Twitch getting different results. Okay, cool. That has now understand it. Uh, made it understandable. So sorry about that. And hopefully we're back to within a fraction of a second. Um, that's cool. 
Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Grand Grand Ad Jackie, for upgrading your pledge. For some reason, reading your name. Why did reading your name make me want to eat a hamburger? Like, really, because I only eat once a day. I eat, well, not really. I eat in a five or six hour window. So today I ate from maybe 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., for example. I eat lots in that time, but then I stop and I intermittent fast till the next day. So right now, <laughs> I haven't eaten for hours. And I've been using my brain. And I read your name and I really wanted a hamburger. Um, and it's because there's a local hamburger place in Cambridge, <coughs> excuse me, and I can't even remember what it's called, but I know exactly where it is, um, that serves a burger called a lewd, no, a jack, and that's why it's because you've got jack in there. Okay, anyway, that's why I suddenly wanted a hamburger. I digress. Uh, hopefully the sound's much better, which is awesome. Um, I know what's going on now. If you're on Discord, don't listen on Discord, listen on Twitch, or don't watch on Twitch, <laughs> but uh, either way, don't listen on Discord and watch on Twitch. So, lots of people saying the sound's off, but it should be fixed now. If you're listening and watching on Twitch, it's half a second of delay. So on Twitch, here's a clap. Is the audio half a second ahead of the video? If so, uh, let me know, I'll, I can tweak that easily. Um, awesome, cool, so I've got to the bottom of that. Where are we? Let's bring up the Kickstarter page, render it a different way. Hey, 12633, now it's starting to pick up. So people are starting to back the new pledges, which is fantastic news. So thank you very much for supporting those. I'm just gonna deconflict the chat with the Chrome. On the last stream, we had all sorts of problems where uh, the chat would be in front of things. I've sorted that out. I've got my stream layers a little bit uh, better now. So hopefully we won't have that. Um, can you adjust in the opposite direction or minus? So on the audio, I am, my audio is currently 0.2 of a second delayed. That's where I currently am. Um, it's 0.2 of a second artificially delayed on the video. So I can't go in the other direction, no. Not without delaying the video, which I can't seem to do at the moment. So I have a question on the Discord Voice Lounge. Go ahead. Hmm. Can we make game dev merchandise? You mean like badges that go on your top like this? Or badges that are loose like this that stick on things? Or a mug? Or um, Yeah, we have got some merchandise coming. Um, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, absolutely. Merch is in beta at the moment. So we do have the idea of doing merch. Um, last time I checked, it's very much in beta and isn't working. Um, but will uh, be coming very soon. Just letting Lucy know straight away. Okay, I'll do that later. Cool, so yes, we have merch coming. Uh, it's on our website in the footer, but none of it works just yet, but coming very soon. Cool, so uh, by the way, what is all Met stretch goal modules? Okay, so what we're saying with these new tiers, let me just go to the back of, back of, uh, matrix here, is if you back at one of these new levels, like um, mini degree, for example, you will get all access to stretch goal courses. So that means that if we meet, the, if the Kickstarter finishes at 30,000, then you'll get physics. If it finishes at 60,000, you'll get physics and shaders. If it finishes at 100,000, you'll get physics, shaders, and proc gen. If you are backed at one of these levels where you get all met stretch goals, this row here, the third row down of X's, if you're backed at that level and the Kickstarter doesn't quite make a stretch goal, because we won't know till the last second, right? Because at the end of the Kickstarter, they tend to do quite well. Then you'll just be refunded pro rata down to the previous backer tier. It's as simple as that. So for example, if you've backed at, let's say, let's pick a higher level to try and see the idea that you should back at a higher level. A little marketing trick for you there. Uh, if you pledged at 29, hoping that you get mini degree plus two, and um, for some reason we didn't hit 30,000, this only applies to 30,000. If we didn't hit 30,000, you'd just be refunded pro rata the six pound difference. You'd drop down a level. Um, and you'll be there. So you'll be charged 29 by Kickstarter because we can't really stop that at that stage, but we will just go in and manually refund all those people back to the previous level. So you'll never, you know, always, the bottom line is what people you really, I think, need to know at the end of the day is you'll always get what you pay for. That's the point. Um, and we'll make sure of that. Where's the link to the Kickstarter? The link to the Kickstarter's here. Um, how do we do this thing? Well, I'm like a weather person. There. gdev.tv forward slash math. That's a capture link, which is a URL shortener, which then goes off to the Kickstarter. Or I could put it in the chat, couldn't I? Oh, is that the end of the music? Have we? Hey, hang on, Mr. Chat, what are you doing? It's decided to go all 
wide on us. Look at that. Strange thing. Why would you do why would you do that to me? Anyway, I'm afraid the chat's gone a bit funny. It's gone wide in its window. I can't quite do the chat how I want to on here. It doesn't render properly in the internal browser in the in, in the wirecast anyway. Don't worry about it. The chat's gone wide. We'll live with it. So, uh, uh, cereal first or milk first, Ben, in the mornings. Um, don't often eat cereal, but I would put the cereal in first and then pour the milk on top. Yeah, good question. It's like it's a bunch of other questions like that. Are you a cereal first or a milk first person? And I guess once you're in the habit, you tend to do it that way. Yeah, I don't often put milk in first. Although you could, couldn't you? Yeah, cool. Good question. Totally unrelated, but one of those nice little flavor questions. Uh, so most of our courses are available through Udemy. Will the new courses be? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, where's the link to the Kickstarter? Down there in the chat and also above my head. Um, there's a Gamma Sutra blog. Very nice. Thank you for pasting that. Uh, milk first. Serial killer. Sorry. I'm sorry I'm a serial killer. Oh, God. Look what I set myself up for. <laughs> milk first, so therefore I'm a serial killer. Yeah, great. Um... I bet there's a whole load of those traps for streamers, right? It's just make them sound a tit by asking them a question that um, I could come up with a whole load. If I if I was in uh, if I wasn't in polite mode for public consumption, um, I could probably cause significant damage with those sorts of things. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, guys. I think we're pretty much there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk about prime numbers for a minute, just because I know how to party. I'm just. Uh, my son was watching Number Blocks the other day, a kids' program, and it had a really nice way of explaining prime numbers. So I'm just going to share it with you. What's a prime number? Because what I love about prime numbers is it doesn't matter what number base you're in. So let's have a, just a quick chat for two minutes about prime numbers, because that's how we party. So a prime number is a number that is only divisible by by uh, one and itself okay that's the definition of a prime number and also there's another exception which is that two is the first prime um, which kind of isn't an exception because it is only divisible by one in itself but just as a note so what does that mean well if you look at like what are numbers well you could think of them as blocks right number blocks so if you have a number one two three four five one two three four five six if you have a number like six and you say well six is either kind of six oops six times one or another way of looking at six is you stack it up this way and you say it's one stack of six right so it's one stack six high cool fine but the thing about six of course is that you can do this you can stack it as two loads of three so because you can stack it differently without anything left over it's not prime all right so six isn't prime fine let's take another number let's say five thing about five, of course, is how are you going to stack five without leaving something left over? You can't, right? You can't divide it without leaving one left over. If you try, what do you get? Well, you get four, and then you've got one left over. Poo. That makes it not prime. That's the essence of a prime number. It's got nothing to do with base 10, the fact we've got 10 fingers. It, it's just natural numbers. It's a consequence of natural numbers. So any prime number works like that. Now, some smart asses might uh, try and think they've seen a pattern in this. I thought I saw a pattern in this the other day. Of course, the pattern of prime numbers isn't known, so I didn't. Um, but there's quite an interesting one, which is I think when you go like this, you go, well, if you go four by four, what have you got? You've got 16. And then if you add 4 to the 16, you've got 20. And then if you add 1, then is that prime? Well, no, it's not because it's 21, which is 7 times 3. And the thing is that you can take the 6 that you've got left over and redistribute them. So um, there's primes are pretty interesting and nobody understands the pattern behind them but the bottom line here for a beginner is just just write your number down and see if you can split it up into um into rows and columns neatly without anything left over and you you won't be able to if it's prime that's the bottom line so there you go that's one way of looking at primes pretty pretty cool nothing to do with nothing to do with number bases nothing to do with anything complicated really it's just can i can i make this thing into a rectangle that's all you're asking with a prime number if i've got a load of blocks and I've got a prime number of blocks. You can't make them into a rectangle. Job done. That's prime. What, how do you generate prime numbers? I don't know. Does anybody know? Not really. I mean, there are some ideas, but um, people don't understand the patterns of prime numbers. They're pretty cool. Any more uh, TED Talks in the works? Uh, no. Um, not at the moment. Maybe they'll invite me back. Um, do I have a link to the, my TED Talk? I didn't think my TED Talk was great. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was great, but that's probably because I didn't prepare it enough because I like winging things. 
Um, but it was good, and it was in Berlin, and I'll just see Ben TEDx. Here you go. I uh, should probably check this link. Let me check this link. I'll check the link live before I share it with you, um, before I share it in the chat. Yep, that's noisy. It works. This is me fumbling the keyboard as I try and type it into the chat. Uh, wicked, 12,721. Awesome, that's great. If anybody in the voice lounge wants to say or ask anything, they are very welcome. Um, I'm just trying to scroll this George Prescott question across because this chat has gone squiffy. Should I just reload this chat client? Um, is that going to work? No. Maybe. Maybe. It did work. The great news is reloading the chat client worked. The bad news is all the chat questions disappeared. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so if you could uh, put any questions from George Prescott's, including George Prescott's and downwards, uh, into the chat that you want answering, that would be awesome because then I'll be able to read it. I guess I could always go to Twitch. They'll still be there. Could go do that in the meanwhile, if it was on Twitch. Yeah, maybe too sophisticated. No, this is great. So uh, I've got a question in the Discord voice lounge. Let me just ask this question, answer George's question, then I'll come to you. So George says we'll be covering liquid physics. Yes, in the physics extension. So let's get it to 30,000. We'll be covering liquid physics. Uh, and in the Discord voice lounge, what's the question? And uh, please keep it brief so that I can relay it to the live people. So firstly, I love this guy's voice. <laughs> Where's, where are you from? Awesome. So he's from New Orleans in Louisiana. I love the voice accent. So cool. I've really got to get this audio coming through. Um, you know, there is a way I could do this. I could just make it come out of the speakers and then the speakers would come into the microphone. Um, and I'll probably do that for the next one if I can't route it through digitally. It just seems kind of impure. Anyway, how do you get better at programming? Do more of it. And if what you're doing is too difficult, do something simpler. Um, so that's the bottom line. Uh, try our most basic courses. Try the Unity 2D course and the Unity 3D course and, uh, and see if you can get off the ground from there. Um, if they're not helping you enough, then uh, keep an eye out. Rick might be producing some even more beginner content for people. Um, yeah, so a few options for you. So thanks for asking. And it's a shame your voice isn't coming out. I'll tell you what, I, I think I can do this hack right now. Let me just do that. Um, Built-in output. So somebody else say something on the on the uh, voice lounge. Check. Yo. Say something again. My chat. Something chat, again. Chat, 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 chat. Yeah, sort of rubbish. I mean, not your voice is rubbish. Your voice is great, but the effect is rubbish. <laughs> um, oh, maybe that was working. No, maybe it wasn't. Who knows? Okay, one more try. Try try on the Discord voice lounge, and then people on the stream, tell me if you hear people. My sound is very, oh, yeah, it's really good. Yes, very, very on camera. Yeah, no, I think it's going to suck, personally, so let's not do that, uh, and we'll do that in a future stream. It would be better if I routed it through digitally than, than through this analog gap. So I think I'm going to take a final question from Azrael, and uh, then say thank you very much for being here, and please hit up the new backer levels on the Kickstarter. I will leave time for a little extra question or two about the Kickstarter, just to make sure that the backer tiers are clear. So do Azrael's question first, and then uh, we'll go from there. So Azrael says, will you be covering mathematical progressions, like how to determine how many points you need to get to the next level, not just one times points per level? Oh yes, I see, like that. Um, Probably. And that's a, that would be a good example, right? So if you could email in to us, um, Lucy at Game Dev TV or Ben at Game Dev TV, um, like the exact problem you've got, what I'll do is I'll make some content, basically, especially for you, but knowing that other people are going to be asking the same question. All right. And we'll solve the problem for you in the course. That would be cool. Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, there won't be any more echo because I've turned that off. Uh, question. Okay, so I just need to fix my audio and then I'll take that other Discord voice question. Go, go ahead with the question. I think the stream will be able to hear it, but it is, as I say, it is going to suck a bit. So go ahead. So this is a question about the mathematics part. I was wondering, like, how wide uh, 
open area in mathematics do you cover? Do you cover uh, geometry uh, as well, or uh, like how how so, far are you going towards standard knowledge? I guess. You could say. Okay, so the question is, how wide will the the coverage of mathematics be in the course? Um, it'll be all the foundational math you need for game development, which is most basic maths that you would learn at school, uh, all of the basic maths you'd learn at what we call A-levels in the UK, um, all of the basic maths you would learn um, probably, let's try and unify it across the world, the sort of level of maths you'd need to get into a university anywhere in the world. For, will get you to the standard of kind of university entry, and some of the content will be beyond that, it'll be first year university maths. In some areas we'll go further than that because it's specialized for you for game development in some ways we'll cover things that aren't covered in maths because they're more computer science related uh, some of the combinatorics and the understanding of number bases and the way that uh, permutations all this type of stuff some of that won't necessarily be covered in some syllabuses around the world uh, outside of games so um, pretty wide to be honest not too deep until we go into the, the stretch goals but pretty wide um, introduction to maths. The idea is not only to teach maths for game development, but to give a good general introduction to maths for everybody. I have uh, just one more question that kind of ties into it. Okay, go ahead with the other question, yeah, and I've turned the background music down just to help people hear you. I was wondering, um, I am currently, I get, uh, as I said, in the 3D Unity course, and I was wondering if um, I need to learn more coding for the, I guess, math, or is it going to help, is the math going to help me expand my knowledge of uh, programming as well, so to speak? Cool, so I think the stream will have heard some of that, but I can understand the levels are going to be pretty quiet. Will the maths help uh, with your programming? Uh, yes, it will to some extent, because with every single problem we hit, we'll be taking a game-related problem, we'll be looking at the math behind that problem, and then we'll be translating it into code for you so you'll be seeing a lot of co more code there'll be tend to be one or two lines of code rather than lots of code uh, but it'll very much tell you how to use apis how to use other people's functions and the like it's not going to teach you like code architecture for that the higher level code stuff you need to look at the udemy the unity rpg on udemy and i'll put a link to that in the chat uh, and for basic coding you want to look at all of our beginner basic courses um, so that should answer that so now i want to just go to the kickstarter and make sure that the um, looking at the Kickstarter page, everybody, and I'm going to do that now, um, take a look at the new pledge levels and the pledge matrix on the campaign page. And if you've got any questions specific to that, so I just want it super clear in everybody's mind what you're getting. Hopefully that pledge matrix at the top of the campaign page uh, makes that really clear. Um, but I would really be interested to hear your feedback on that. And then I am going to finally wind this up because I'm starting to slur my words, which suggests I'm really tired. So... Any questions on the campaign page? Can we get some mass for shaders? Absolutely, Combo. Help us get the Kickstarter to 60,000, and that will happen. Can it get to 60,000? It can. We just need to have enough excitement built around it uh, and enough people sharing it. Um, one of the challenges we have is not enough people are searching for maths for games. They were searching for Unreal, they were searching for Unity, etc. So we had much bigger search volumes to start with. But we do have several more tricks up our sleeve. So what you guys can do is up your pledges and share with your friends. Um, share on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Those are the things that you guys can do to help. We'll be doing what we can in the background. And if it doesn't get anywhere, then it doesn't. It doesn't get. If it doesn't get to any goal, it doesn't get there. That's fine. That's natural. We'll then reapproach those things a different way in the future and try and find a commercially viable way of teaching them. So. Don't worry, all is not lost if we don't get to a particular stretch goal. It's just that for this particular Kickstarter, it just means we'll be keeping it tighter and keeping it focused on really what the essence of this is, which is core, pure mathematics for game development, but also a fun way to learn maths in general. So, nice to see this new computer. I've got a new, totally new computer. I'm on an i9 iMac now. I use Mac because I can also do iOS and Swift development and that type of stuff. I, I can also do all the PC work I want to do by just running Windows either natively or in a virtual machine. Um, but I went from a uh, slow old i5 to a 8-core i9 5 gigahertz boost thing. Um, <laughs> CPU used to be maxed out on these streams, um, d doing all the stuff it's doing for the stream. It's now like, yeah, give me more. So that's pretty cool to see. It's like running at 20%, and I don't even think it's using all its cores. So uh, it's not. It's only using one. Th it's not using hyper-threading. So it's pretty cool. Okay, I haven't. I'm not seeing any more questions about the campaign, um, and I therefore going to start wondering, winding up. 
wondering what you would recommend for character modeling, I would recommend Udemy uh, C, uh, what is it? Um, this course here by Mikey. Many people think they can make cool games without maths. What will you say to encourage them to support the course? Um, you can make cool games without maths, but you're never going to make outstanding games without maths. Just watch the video a little bit down the Kickstarter page uh, from Naughty Dog. If you respect Naughty Dog as a game development house, and I certainly do for, the, for things like The Last of Us, uh, for things like uh, Uncharted, Crash Bandicoot in the day and all the like, um, they talk about the importance of maths. So yes, you can make some cool games and some successful games, but uh, you really are stifling your potential if you don't know the maths mainly because you don't know what you don't know and that stuff you don't know that you don't know is just outside your reach and might be holding you back so when Notch made Minecraft he'd had to have to have known enough maths not only to deal with the graphic aspects of it there's plenty of maths in there especially when you write it in JavaScript to deal with the basic physics in Minecraft how water fills up in the terrain and how blocks stay where they are all this type of thing but also to deal with the procedural generation got plenty of maths in there as well that arguably made him billions of dollars, some basic understanding of math. So at least he could speak to somebody who has that understanding. Um, I really strongly suggest you have it. And if you don't use it, come and tell me in a few years, hey, Ben, I learned this maths off you and I've never used it. I'd be really, really surprised. If you're still developing games in a few years and you're not using the math on a daily basis, I'll be super surprised, George. So yeah, good question. Thanks for that one. All right, so I am going now finally to wind up the stream. So thank you again for being here. I don't really know how to end the stream in a graceful way. Um, I guess what I could do is start peeling bits off. I could peel off the thing on the right like that. Um, we've got a bit of background music, so that's fine. Um, I might just leave it with music for the last minute to make sure there's a clear ending. So I'm going to play some louder music now as soon as I stop speaking. Uh, set the screen black. Thank you all for being here and see you, uh, see you soon.